uh, Americans no. for tax reform president. Uh, Grover, let's get right to it. It looks like sure. we are getting watered down tax reform, mm -hmm. especially if the Democrats involved. And that's where right. the president's strategy appears to be going. Are you OK with that? Uh, well, it doesn't make any sense uh, hmm. to the only reason you'd want any Democrats is to get to 60 votes so that you could uh, have as large a tax cut as possible and have dramatic tax reduction in year 11 through 50 outside the 10 year window. You only need 50 Republicans plus the vice president to cut taxes any way you want in the first 10 years. Those tax cuts would disappear in year 11 like the Bush tax cuts right. unless they were paid for through growth, which is helpful and important, through raised, it, eliminating some deductions and credits like the uh, tax deductibility of state and local taxes, or by making assumptions on present policy versus present law. So you can get several trillion dollars a decade in permanent tax cuts using that strategy. You can go deeper than that in the first 10 years. Are the Democrats, is, are eight Democrats going to walk over and help us have a larger tax cut in the future? No. I don't count any. I certainly don't right. count eight. Would but, one Democrat be the Democrat who gave us 50 votes if John McCain took another walk again, okay? Right. No, they wouldn't. So you could get, after you got 51 Republicans in the Senate, mm -hmm. you could have one or two Democrats trying to save their backsides for the 2018 election going, yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Right. But no one will be there to make the difference. And you might even get seven to agree to a big tax cut, in theory, mm. knowing that you don't have eight. So all of those are going down blind alleys. It doesn't work. There are no votes. Forty-five of the 48 Democrats wrote a screw-you letter to the Republicans <laughs> saying, we'd love to help you on tax reform as long as it's not a tax Bronx. cut, as long yeah. as it doesn't apply to everybody. And the third one was, as long as you don't use budget reconciliation, so you need eight votes, which is right. never happening. Well, so that's a we're not in letter, and only three people didn't sign it. Well, President Trump says middle class tax, cut, tax cuts are his priority. But mm -hmm. based on what we've heard so far, the rich could end up paying more in taxes if you take away the deductions for state and local taxes, especially in those states, by the way, that are high tax, that are liberal leaning, your Californias, your Illinois, yes. your New Yorks. Uh, yes. Can you live with that? Uh, two things. Everybody mm -hmm. will get a rate cut. Uh, it is possible that, in, that some very rich people in some very expensive cities in blue states would, uh, at least in the short term, be paying more because they'd lose the deductibility of very high property taxes and income taxes in Manhattan and San Francisco and uh, cities and states like that. On the other hand, right. if you're in the stock market and we take the uh, corporate rate down towards 15, uh, I don't think there's anyone in the country who'll be worse off for tax reform, and almost every American will be significantly better off. 95% of Americans will no longer have to itemize their tax deductions because the standard deduction is being increased under Trump and the Republican plan. All right, well, you mentioned this, uh, the corporate tax rate. Senator Orrin Hatch says he doubts the president will be able to slash that corporate tax rate down to 15%, that may be closer to 20, even 22, 23%. What do you feel about that? Well, 15 is better than 22, but 22 is a heck of a lot better than 35. Uh, at Americans for Tax Reform, we're pushing for 15. I think it's a great number. I think 14 is a better number, but 15 yep. is a wonderful number. The smaller the digit, the better. Um, and then the other thing we want to look at is full business expensing. You could do it for three years, and on a static model, it costs $11 billion for crying out loud. You don't have to make it permanent. You go to full business expensing, people start you know, going dramatically into to savings and so on. I'm sorry, that was 50 percent right. uh, is the 11 billion. But you can fit a lot in inexpensively for three years and then think about it. Should we make it permanent? I think the argument will be yes. There's also a tax looming from Obamacare that we need to kick out into the future and or kill. It's a right. tax on in, in insurance premiums for crying out loud. In order to reduce your cost of health care, we should kill that tax and reduce everybody's insurance just, costs. It, it just get be, it done, is yes. what I'm saying. Make it retroactive so we can all enjoy that this year as well. Anyway, Yes, Grover, I think there will be a lot of retroactivity. Good. I like to hear that. Grover Norquist, always a mine of information. Thank you so much, Grover. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.